Now, Alice, I have brought you a fairy book for when you are older. You can give it to your children. I'm the nurse Darcy Crane, and this is Miss Alice Maybell. Morning, child. Good morning, sir.
singing. And I yours. <laughs> anyway, well, it was a fine service. I love the parable of the fishes. Do not mind that coven of witches. <gasps> you talk of witches? Do not tell me you still have your nightmares, Alice. Sometimes, but we are talking only of them. Oh, well, the husband hunters. <laughs> no doubt full of disappointment because my brother is not here. Rather a miserable sort of day for them without an heir in sight. Well, serve them right. I would far sooner walk home with the two of you on my arm than a gaggle of them, I tell you that. Harry, come here. There's someone I want you to meet. Poor Harry spoke too soon. Have you seen the old man? Yes, this afternoon. Oh, God, Alice. He leaves nothing alone. One minute he's shouting, the next he's in a dream. Now he's muttering about changing everything. Starting with new chairs. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen him in such a strange mood. I wonder what Charlie would make of it. You know, I could never think badly of the squire. After all he's done for me. Alice. He's... He's got some notion in his head. I fear it will be bad for all of us. Of London. Yes, I would love to hear. All the same, thieves everywhere, but the worst wear wigs and practice law. <laughs> well said, Charlie. There are more thieves in the courts than the filthiest alehouse. What do you want with lawyers? As little as possible. You've already got 300 pounds from your mother. As well as that rundown piece of misery car, Will. Oh, but I see how the road turns. When your pockets are full, off you go. Then you're back here with your begging bowl. I'm sorry if that's how it seems. Well, he was here at Christmas and brought all kinds of gifts. You never thanked him for the effort. You hold your tongue, sir. Save your wisdom for the wenches in the alehouse. Here's the truth, sir. I told you to hold your tongue! I shall easily forget the time you came from Paris. By the by, Alice, I saw in London a little picture you would have liked, an enameled miniature of Marie Antoinette as small as your watch. Well, it's much good telling her how pretty it is. What the devil did you buy it for her? My day, young fella, be ashamed to talk of such a thing. Unless he had it in his pocket, ready to make an offer. You cannot expect all to be as generous as yourself, sir. The thought, at least, was very kind. Friends to see, I take it. I do have matters to attend. <laughs> see, doesn't deny it. Well, away with you. We can look after ourselves. Oh, my wife Sarah. She was a good woman. You should have seen her. Oh, look brighter, Jim. Who's gonna hang you? Smile up, or I'll stir you with a poker. <laughs> That's enough music. Come and talk to me for a while. Oh, 
you look a little pale, Ali. Are you not well? No, I'm not myself, sir. But it is nothing. I'll be better soon. Good. Because it's high time we spoke plainly. Travel. Yeah, you shall have it. You shall have anything you want. Now, I'm not getting down on my knee, but I tell you straight. I'm offering you the best settlement made on a Fairfield wife since my great-uncle's time. So what do you think? I'm not being a fool, am I? We've always uh, had a soft spot for each other, haven't we? I'm very grateful. It is just... As I say, I've been sick, and I'll be all right tomorrow. You are so kind, sir. And I can never thank you as much well, as... Well, wait till it's all done, and then thank me. And you will thank me. You've no idea of it yet. Hmm. Not an idea. The trick of it, isn't it, eh? Running away to draw us after. Tomorrow, sir. We can talk then. I'll be well then. Aye. You will. Summon me when he had one of it. It was obvious even from the way you looked to you. But do you think if we talk to him, if we say what happened between us, I have my doubts, but it's not up to him. God, oh, Ali, it's what I've been burning to tell you. Gray has said yes. Is it not worse than cruel to your father? Of course, I will talk to him. That's to be done. But whatever he says, Harry has set things in motion. Maybe the only chance we have. We will always be in your debt, Harry. I hope he never discovers your part. My reputation as a carouser has its uses. I shan't be here in the morning, and never in a year would he believe I was sober. You cannot face him alone. Let me stay. No, I'll tell him and I'll join you. There's no time to hesitate. You must go. That, sir. The girl's up and gone. You call that gratitude? She gives no reason, it's true. But on the contrary, she asks forgiveness and offers undying gratitude. Oh, words! 
Your words! Dirty lying whore. Don't say that, sir. I take my leave. It's true enough. Why shouldn't you hear it? Good God. There's more, isn't there? Hey, what have you been keeping from me? Damn you, say it! Only what I came to tell you. That I wanted to be my wife. So you've been cuckling at me then all the time, both of you, have you? Puddling palms here in this house all the time. Eh? Laughing! None of that, sir, please. But I don't swear it. it wasn't against you. No. Don't you come near me! You've spilled my blood, sir. You've spilled your father's blood and for lust. God damn you! You won't marry her if I have to hunt them both down like animals. Aye. Aye, run. That's it. You must leave me quick. I have not seen you since you were in your cradle. We can waste no time. The squire will be here. My family must be witnesses. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God. Which holy estate? Christ adorned and beautified with his presence and first miracle that he wrought in the carnal world. Into this holy estate, these two persons present come now to be joined. If any man can show just cause why they may not be lawfully joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Too late, Squire Fairfield. They are married. I care nothing if they are married. You destroyed her father's life. You shall not destroy hers. I can find them. This is much less than you deserve. You still feel you've done the right thing? Of course. You know it. Are we near Carwell? Another four hours. Have you got what you need? Everything I need is in this room. This is how it's done. It is not quite the same as with Dulcie. What do you do next? The clock. 
clothes are carefully folded. Of course, sometimes it is late and the maid is not here. And then I forget. And I move quickly without thought. smiling. I'm happy. We're here together. Do you ever think of last Christmas? All the time. I can never forget that walk. All those years. You might have been a thousand miles away. But I wasn't. No. Thank heaven. Be settled in Carwell. The moment I know it's safe. I must ride there now. It's only a few hours. But I will come. No. I have to be sure first. The sooner I leave, the faster I'll return. Charles. It's all I've wanted. To be at Carwell with you as my wife. But it has to be safe. I warn you, it's not very grand. I cannot wait to see it, but I don't want you to go. And I do not want to leave. Well, Archdale, I hope. Well, sir, thank you. Good. I uh, want to discuss a matter with you. Shall we walk down to the avenue? Uh, you uh, held the same rank in the line, Sergeant Major, did you not? Yes, sir. Well, they say that sergeants have more to do with the state of a regiment than all the other officers, commissioned or non commissioned, put together. A good deal depends on them, sir. Yes, and they keep to themselves. Yes, well, that's good. Now, uh, myself and another fellow, we, we have to make a payment, but it's very discreet. A thief. No, it was. <laughs> Can we go from here? Oh, you're all right now. What has upset you so? The Grange is safe now. We can move on. Where is Dulcie? Awake and glad to see you, sir. 
What was it she saw? She sometimes has bad dreams, sir. Well, no more nightmares. We'll leave at once. I wish I had money to give you a palace, but at least it's ours. He won't come here. No, he's been here once already and been told we're abroad. We're safe here, Ali. Welcome to Carwell, my lady. I'm sure I will like such an old, quiet place. I fear not everyone finds it welcoming, ma'am. And as you know, hasty arrangements marry ill with convenience. We were up half the night making ready. Half the night? Well, there were matters to address. No. I've made a list of the contents of the house, ma'am. There's not so much, I'm afraid. Not that way. Once I resolved to visit all the bedrooms in one day, but I gave up at 60. Tom, remove the painting, sir, as you requested. Who is he? Sir William Fairfield. Known to us all as Boots. Wife brought this house into the family. Much good it did her, poor thing. Why? It's not very pleasant. Her baby drowned. Not the most cheerful of women, is she? But she's no fool. More important, we can trust her. Croquet. Croquet in the kitchen. <laughs> 
<laughs> or perhaps she stores things from outside. No, wait, look, look. Just grab it. <laughs> Breathe, <right. laughs> wait. I was never good at the pen, ma'am. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Mrs. Tarnley. I assure you we were laughing only at there being so few things left. I don't know what you mean by left. It's not a woman keeps things longer than I do, and I was never counted careless. Oh, but we did not think you broke them. No, of course not, Mildred. We were only laughing at our own foolishness. Oh, please don't take offence. Oh, I take no offence at foolishness, sir. I only worry at the peril of indulging it in this house. <laughs> what does she mean, Carol? Oh, she's been here so long she resents the intrusion, that's all. <laughs> Did you think the squire will come? No. Come here. <laughs> Mildred's mutton was always something. It's wonderful to be able to eat as you like, do as you like. It's not like the hall, is it? Have you been back? Oh, yes. Yeah, he doesn't talk much. But the lawyer's told him he can't unsettle the place, so you've no fear there. The trouble is what he'll do next. The old beast is becoming unmanageable. Thank heavens he doesn't suspect your part in it. Lily! Now this is a fine meal. I'm sorry if I startled you before. We've just seen your horse, sir. Lily, do you want... do you ride? Well, no, no, there's, a, there's a, a fine little mare I passed on my way here that would suit you very well. Lily? You know, he should not be allowed to treat us like this. One day I may not stay my hand. Anyway. No, I like this part of the world. I may stop in Dorling on my return. I have many friends there. Have you been to Dorling yet, Alice? No, I would love to go. Even for a short time. What? Well, well, um, perhaps... We should keep ourselves away from towns for a while yet. I'm sorry. There's something wrong, Harry. It's been haunting me. Will it never stop? Can you be certain? The old soldier. And now I think it's coming here. But what could be done when there's nothing on Earth? Unless there's some way. I have your coat. Thank you. Harry was just taking his leave. For days, sir. For days? Dulcie, did you ever hear of the old soldier? No. Who's that? I don't think I would care to meet him here. I overheard my husband speak of such a person, and 
I wondered if he was someone with a grudge against Charlie. Maybe he's one of the creditors. What a gloomy place. Is it burnt? No, it is not burnt. It has been painted black. Who would paint it black? Less of a mad. Oh, I hated sunlight. My bedroom must be close by, yet it would take 20 minutes to return there. Let us leave. Whose room is this? Dulcie? 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 What is the matter, miss? Did you fall? Uh, yes, it was foolish, but I'm quite all right. This is Tom Orange, ma'am. He does all the errands. And... Today he's storing the apples. Oh, of course. Yes, Tom. I've heard of you from Mrs. Tarnley. Yes, ma. I even carry food up from the farm, just so you won't have to tell the young master, since there's neither drink nor victuals, suppose, my lord, we play at skittles. <laughs> clothes? I know no clothes, ma. Oh, there could be insects in the room if an animal were trapped there, or a bird or a rabbit. No one's been there for so long. I'll see that it's cleaned, though it is best you don't wander there. But there were signs of recent occupation, medicine and, and clothing. Who lived there? No one's been there for so long. Tell me about what happened here. That baby, where did it drown? 
You do not want to know. Tell me. It was in that part of the house, in a basin filled for washing. No one knew if her husband was to blame. Glad to be back. Sorting out debt is the most miserable business. Yes, I agree. It's a horrid story. Tarly should know better than to recount ancient gossip from long before she was ever here. I tell you, Alice, if the Fairfields had committed half the iniquities people imagine of us, we'd be a good deal wealthier. Charlie. I still don't understand why I'm not allowed to go to Dorling. And I heard you speak of something the other night. I want to ask you, is it someone to whom you owe money? The old soldier? What? What are you talking about? That name. You said it to your brother. I don't recall, but it was of no importance. It was my brother who was in the army, as you know perfectly well. Of course, but I... Please do not feel you have to eavesdrop on conversations about debt. God knows, Alice, I'll give you any money I have. <laughs> Expecting with tea. No tea. And if you're harboring them here.
did not have to lie, sir, for I just said that you were here months back, and so you were, sir, <laughs> and nobody but Master Harry had visited us for months. That were true, too. Well, thank God I had wind of it. Thank you, Lily. Yes, thanks, Lily. I didn't believe his temper would last as long as this. Poor oh, Harry. Once he hears of Alice's condition, surely he'll change. He's bad-tempered and proud, but he's not mad. Well, till the baby comes, I suppose you must say we're in France. And you'll deal with that other business? Mm -hmm. Oh, darling, I know what a strain this has all been for you. Please don't wait on us if you wish to go out. I'm sure you know what I wish. To be away from here. Even just for a short time, the squire's gone back now. A visit anywhere. Where? I do not care. Bedlam, perhaps, for I know I will go mad if I am shut up any longer. Unless, perhaps, you could visit Harry's godson. Charles. He said before you came down that he looks in on the boy tomorrow in Dawley. A godson? Harry, why did you not tell me? His mother may even be of some use to us when the time comes. I would love to go and see him. Oh, please, consider the danger of the squire's spies. The place is not much to see. Harry, I... we'll take that risk. You must do this for us, please. Welcome, ladies. I'm glad you've arrived safely. I fear in one respect you may be disappointed. This is Claire. As you know, Claire, Mrs. Fairfield hoped to see your boy Stephen. I am sorry, ma'am. Had I known you were a coming, then of course I would have seen to it, but he was summoned out this afternoon on some messages. It's a pity. There's his things. So how many children do you have? Oh, just the one, ma'am. Enough. And when are you? July. One boy's armful, all right. Up and down he goes. But I know that you will find a child does make a home, Mum. Harry seems like a devoted godparent. He's more than that. Don't you see? Well, little wonder poor Harry was uneasy with the notion, obviously, the boy is his. And they didn't want us to see him, for no doubt he looks exactly like his father. Yes, perhaps you're right. Still, he is kind and has obviously done what he could. Many men would just look the other way. Miss! Yes, what Miss! happens when they do? My baby is ill! The workhouse. Yes, they say the families have suffered horribly from typhus the last few Please. months. Please! Driver! Give what you can spare. Is she bad? They say she only has a few weeks, God bless her. You won't take her, will you, ma'am? few weeks of comfort for her. Take her? For all this one? But she's healthy enough and needs a proper place. And you are with child, ma'am. And she make a good worker. Oh, please, ma'am. For the chance of a straight road. <laughs> but she is yours. Here, take this. Driver! on business at once, as I feared. At once, but... Now, I'd like to finish in peace, if you don't mind, Alice. Soldier. 
The fire seems to have gone out. He. Tell's never here now. The cowards paid a man to lock me in an upstairs room while he fled. So I go to steal his money, but I couldn't find his room. sleeping upstairs in Mr. Charles' room. Mistress, please. She is married and with child. Who is her husband? Master. His name? Mr. Fairfield, sure. There are three Mr. Fairfields. <coughs> you will not lie or I will do worse. <laughs> so, he is married. Please, please, let me go. You show him marriage, please. 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 <laughs> Are you sick, ma'am? Cruel old girl. You leave poor Vra alone among the ghosts. Oh, for God's sakes, ma'am. Ah, that is so like the dear old Mildred Danby. Dear old cat. I could stroke your thin leaves. I will look after you when I come to Wyvern. What you left in that cupboard? Clothes were in shreds, there were insects everywhere. Took half a day to clear up. Ah, he makes me go away from here. So, I'll leave him a little present.
Charles? Charles? Charlie? Life. I am the mistress of Wyvern. Him, can't you? I know you can. The fever's almost left him. Oh, thank God. But I'm afraid he's not out of danger. You must be his nurse. He's talking more now, and he needs you beside him. Oh, I must go to him directly. There's something else, Mrs. Fairfield. I understand you had the baby in his room. That's a terrible risk. If you undertake this, your baby must be nursed elsewhere. Elsewhere? There's infection in this house, and you're exactly the means by which it could be passed. No. Never. I will not send him away. Believe me, you must. I cannot be answerable otherwise. 
I understand the babe can be nursed in a house that's safe in Dorling. I gather you've been there. It's Claire Shaw's. I'm what the doctor said, a touch only. Mrs. Tarnley, I'm Dr. Willett. I promised your doctor I would oversee the baby's care. Claire Shaw has agreed to help clean, and my own nurse will shortly be taking charge. Soup and bread. It is three o'clock. But why are you up? It is afternoon, ma'am. I've been sleeping. Oh, what use am I if I sleep? You've stayed up for nights. Now, take this. She's come a long way, all right. Is she known here? Not to a soul. She's a mad, sick woman. Just think of it as a mercy. Someone was careless. Her door left unlocked. No one will know your part. I have the one who deals with her. Yes, it's uh, an act of private mercy. Please live. 
She'll hurt anything I love. Will you beware of her? <laughs> Don't talk of her. Talk to me of the river. The river. Mrs. Fairfield. Where is my baby? <laughs> Mrs. Fairfield. <laughs> Mrs. Fairfield, he died in the early hours. I was here and... Why was I not called earlier? I must see him. I know, but first you must hear me. I saw the baby when it came. He slept soundly. There is Scarlatina in the town, but this part was always safe. Very early this morning, the poor nurse you saw downstairs woke to see a sudden change and sent for me at once. I sent an urgent message, but the illness was far swifter. Where is he? It's a rule of this infection that he could not be left here. But the wake will be at Wyvern. You'll see him there. Please, Lord, give me strength. Are you sure you're strong enough? I need to see them. Neighbors will be there, I dare say. Mm hmm. All of them. I've notified several personally. You see, uh, Dobbs? Chai was good to Dobbs. Gave him 20 pounds once, like a fool. When he lost his cattle. I saw Dobbs. He was crying. More fool, Dobbs. Was crying, was he? Yes. And Alice will be there. I reckon I must meet her. Well, then you will be at the funeral. I'll pay my respect in my own way. He should never have gone behind my back. If they'd been open about it, I might have railed a bit, but they could have brought me around. Then I wouldn't have made such a blasted fool of myself with her. But a fool I was, and a fool I remain. Maybe I, I went too far at the close. But, but I don't wish to think about that. Why ever did he not come to me? It is hard to bear. Aye, it is. Because he held fast to the end. 
which makes him a better man than you will ever be. You're frightened of any shadow? Who would not be? We are a guest. There. It's ready. You must take it. Thank you. Mrs. Fairfield, I wanted to offer you all my condolences on this appalling tragedy. And I'm afraid there is some business to discuss. Your husband left little money. And you understand that without an heir, you have no rights in Carwell or Wyvern. But you'll not be liable for any debts. The squire has arranged to settle them in full. All other arrangements are up to the squire. I think that covers the situation in general. Thank you. If there is anything else. No, there is nothing else. I'm so sorry, Ali. Even now, the squire still does not honor him. Has he no charity at all? Even I've begun to wonder. Last night, he had nothing but harsh words for me. So hard to believe this was the man who took me in. Alice. Alice. There is something you do not know. Even Charles did not. Whatever you were told, the squire was no friend of your father's. There was a, a quarrel about rent. He, he closed the walk just to spite him. He knew he was in poor health. He did not save his life. He hastened his death. I was amazed when you were taken in. But it was my father's request. They were not even speaking. I'm so sorry. Alice, go back. I wish to wait here a while.
Alice? That was never an easy thing. Easy? I realize we've had our differences. Amends will never be easy. They can take time. But I'll, uh, I'll give you a roof to see you through. And more besides. An offer, is it? If that's how you term it. Is that why my husband was killed? What? As you well know, his attacker has gone free, and it was you who hunted us down. That's a lie! I was angry, but I would never have hurt you. And is it also a lie to say you hated my father, that you were his enemy, that you even helped cause his death? But th that... I, it was all such a long time ago. So it is not. Yet you always deceived me. And even now, today of all days, you would come here to seek my favours. You would offer bribes and dangle me on your knee and call me your little rogy. And proffer all the jewels and cloth of wife. And well, I do not want your blood money. You can live here with it and may it choke you dead. How dare you say such things to yes, me? Yes, I dare, sir. And I will take my leave without anything of yours. May you reap the blighted harvest you have sown and take what joy you can in it. I know when there is something on your mind, Dulcie, for it is the only time you are truly silent. Is it because I go away tomorrow? It is just a few days. The memories are so unpleasant. It has been five years now. I had hoped you might think again this year. It is something I have to do. I owe it to my son to tend his grave on the day he was born. And I never see anyone there or talk to a soul. Furniture here is not worth a jot. Sir. No. I doubt if I am your sir. Who is it? 
It's Alice. Who? Alice. Who can it be? She has less police here now than I. But it is. I came back to see my boy's grave. Then both of us have a boy's grave. Though I'm sure I couldn't bear to see mine. Why are you here? Here? At least I see no one. It's all a grave for me now. If you are truly Alice, I marvel at it. But why are you not at the manor? There's not for me there, or anywhere. Even if you are a dream, I'm glad to see you. You don't accuse me, as you once did. Though perhaps I should be accused. I hardly know the truth of it anymore. Or oh, care. You there? Has the old squire been here? He was seen this way. My God, Alice. Oh, Harry, I've seen him. I truly thought he was a ghost. He is like one. He hardly talks now. Spends most of his time in the old vicarage. He seemed so changed. In every way, like a different man. Well, the doctors say he has not long. The nurse follows him where she can. Anyway. I'm shocked to think that you come each year and do not tell us. Look, next year you're to tell old Darcy she is to come to and I will lodge you both. Come in for a moment. Quite a stranger here now. I did not intend to disturb you. Oh, don't deceive me. Oh, never leave me. How could you use a poor maid so early one morning just as the sun was rising? I heard a maid sing in the valley. Claire, we met in Dorling, did we not? Why, yes, ma'am, it is possible. And how is your boy? My boy, ma'am. You had a boy? Why, no, ma'am. That is your mistake. That was the reason I sent my own child to be tended in your house. Now, you must not be long before you come back. Harry, Claire Shaw. We met her before. Claire? Why, yes, of course you did. It was a long time ago, and though. she is the mother of your godchild. It was why you introduced me, if you recall. Why, what a memory you have. I recall she looked after a little fellow who was Sam Horton's boy, but... Well, as for her being a mother, no, that's a mistake. I have no godchild. Well, not yet, anyway.
this as I keep saying I do recall it, my dear. We went to Claire Shaw's house. She said she had a son. It was the reason for her visit to see him. We even saw his toys. So why in the world should they lie about it? Perhaps the boy died? And they deny he ever existed? Something is wrong. Oh, Dulcie, do you not see? Something is wrong. if you could help me. I'm looking for a Claire Shaw. Claire Shaw, ma'am? No, she's not here now, ma'am. Not for some years. I hardly knew her. She left soon after that sad business here. I think she's in service, ma'am, but I cannot say where. What business? The poor baby has been nursed in this house some years ago, so I hear, and it did not survive. Yeah, that was a year ago, that Scarlettina at the workhouse. They say children were dying in the streets. Well, I must try elsewhere. I don't know her, but a friend wants to reach her. She did one great kindness before she left. You should never judge people. For I'd not thought her a generous type. But look there. Someone had given them to her. And having no children of her own, she had no need for such things. So she left them for my children. If you insist, of course I can read you my notes, Mrs. Fairfield, but surely you're just reopening old wounds. Very well. As you know, after settling him in, I visited your baby once and returned only when he became seriously ill. He had been in good health. It was only when the sudden change came, which I grant was unusual, that I realized he had an infection. And who exactly was nursing him? why the nurse you saw was in charge at the end. And who before that? Claire Shaw? Uh, yes, a Miss Shaw. Something has haunted me since this morning. Everyone remarks how sudden it was, how quick. Unusual, you said, even. Dr. Willett, you saw my baby only once since his arrival. I saw him days after death, and then I was not allowed to touch him. What of that? What are you suggesting? It is my belief this woman has conspired with my husband's brother to do away with my baby. That is a very grave charge. Why else would they pretend to me she had a child? It was only so she would seem a suitable nurse. And I recall Harry was quite put out when I insisted on visiting her that day. Naturally, it was the last thing they expected or wanted. But such considerations are utterly irrelevant when your baby died of a natural fever. And you are certain he was not poisoned? I would swear it. I've seen the infection so many times. Certainly they suffered that year you speak of. The toll was terrible. And if a baby or child had gone missing or was taken away, would there be a record? A record? No. <sighs> Women were trying to hand their sick to any passing carriage. There would be no record, ma'am. As I say, conditions are not quite so bad as they were, for I've heard at that time they scarcely knew who lived and who died. Someone could then easily remove a dying baby and take it to a nearby house. Remove? Well, of course, but why would they want to? I suppose what you surmise is just possible, but please remember, Mrs. Fairfield, all the evidence you have is a woman who lied to you. Oh, my husband was stabbed, my baby gone. My life set aside, and until I chanced upon this woman, I meekly acquiesced in all of it, thinking it was just fate. But that has changed, because now I intend to discover the truth.
to see you. The things as they were. Mum, it is horrible. So we're only a moment to go on when you think what she's done. But Miss Tony must do her his bidding. You will not tell her I wrote. I'm here on my own account, Lily, not yours. But she will have to listen to me. You should not have come here. Why not? Your master is very hospitable, though he has strange guests. That is why it is not safe for you. You used to speak of how the Fairfields mistreated their women. Was it to frighten me? To protect you. Did you protect my child? Only Harry knows the truth. No. Others helped him. Why do you think I am here now? And if you will not help me, I will go down there and talk to her myself. You always were foolhardy. Are you now mad? Do you not remember what we keep here? What she done to you? Once she was crazed, now she is a thousand times worse. And you have no inkling of the evil that made her. I kill for him, and he gives me these chains. They hurt. I can help you. Who are you? I see so little. Tell me, what is you want? To learn something. Look what I have. Laudanum, yes? I will give it to you. Then do, and I speak. There's an heir to wife, and was there not? A little baby. Yes. I have more. Now tell me, what happened to the baby? Baby had to die, baby die. But how does the baby die? Free me, I will not hurt you. First you say, Harry wanted the baby to die. Yes, he promised me such fine things, and to be mistress of Wyvern, and see what the beast does. So did he kill the baby? Safe to murder, baby. Harry say. So what did he do? He takes a workhouse baby. Very sick baby and changes with the boy. Still he feared to kill. So boy was taken to live away. Away where? So the boy 
is a lie. <laughs> but why do you care? I hear it. I know who it is. It is the proud little madam of Carwell, no? Me and you met before here. Did we not? Please tell me the house. You could see your son. It is a lovely place, and I will say. But first, you must do as you promised for Vral. little resting place he has there. Resting? House, I will say, as soon as I am free. He was taken to the place known as... Vale. I'm off for a little ride in the carriage to your old friend. I'll be telling him I gave you a short little taste before I left.
Keep my arm, ma'am. Take it. Valen. Where is it? Where is the house? There's no house here, ma'am. There's only old mine workings from way afore my time. My baby. He is here. I have killed my baby. <laughs> Come. We must go back. Why? There is nothing for me. Don't say that. easier to bear when I thought my boy was dead. No. It is true. Then at least I knew now. I, I cannot go on. You must. I beg you, you must. I have something to tell you. Why did you come? Because something's been troubling me that you said. A part of me keeps nagging. You may have been right. I try and keep a distance always. But there is some filth on my hands. So, I'll try to help you. And there is one thing I know of, though whether it will do you any good, I cannot say. Tell me. It's an errand that's undertaken. A regular payment that puzzles me and Tommy who takes it. I'm very sorry to trouble you, madam, but the coach for Wyvern lost its wheel, and I was wondering if I could perhaps prevail on you for a glass of water. My husband, Mr. Hodgdale, will wish to know your name. Of course. I'm Mrs. Fairbrother. This is Mrs. Fairbrother, sir. Her coach has lost a wheel driving to her cousin at Wyvern, and she requires some water. Thank you, Mrs. Hodgdale. Will you sit down, ma'am? Thank you. The two of you live alone here? Yes. Mrs. Fairbrother, I must undertake my evening readings. Confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double.
had understood from Mr. Archdale you lived here alone. Yes, we do. Save for our children, miss. He would not include them. Your children. They are ready to table, Mrs. Archdale. And Mrs. Fairbrother must be getting back to her coach. Shall I escort you, ma'am? No, that won't be necessary. take private payments here since he was a wee babe. And I knew fine it was for the upkeep of this child, which they pretended was their own. But it was as if they knew me. How can he? As I say, ma'am, I knew there was a lie here. They were not his parents. So I have stayed his friend. And I've told him often that one day there might be a change. That someone might come. Welcome. I saw you from the window. Well, it'll be a cheerless song you sing if you keep such sorry countenances. Have a little punch with me, pray, to liven you up. You keep up the pretense still. Even when it is obvious I know all you did. Well, what was that? I used to kiss you, I recall. It was a long time ago. My brother was still alive. And a few feet away. You stole my child! Tom, what nonsense is this? I know it to be true. I think you refer to an old act of mercy. Just like my father before me, Ali. This poor boy was for the workhouse. He is not yours, madam, and never will be. You are lying. Your accomplice herself has told me. <laughs> what, and you think her word will be taken in court? <coughs> she is a mad witch, as all know. And why is she mad? It is because someone has constantly abused her, treated her little more than a vicious animal. Yes, my brother. <sighs> I fear the time has come that the truth about Charlie be told. She was his wife. No, I am sure she was not, even if she half believes it. For if they were married, you would have trumpeted it. Instead, you had to collude with her behind your brother's back, abusing her body and poisoning her mind with dreams of wyvern, just as you spun out the quarrel between us and your father with lies. Witches are not born, Harry. They are made. And you made her just as your father's pride made you. Nonsense. 
The truth is, my brother always chose badly. And I had to clean out the stables when they kicked down the stall. I tried to be kind to you, Ali. Just like my father. And as with him, precious thanks you give me. And you. As bad as the witch. You can try and prove your claim if you wish. It'll take you a few odd years of arguing, no doubt, and a sack or two of gold before it gets to the courts, and I doubt even then you'd get tuppence. Oh, I'd love to see the faces of the Assizes when they overlook a cripple, a mad woman, and a bastard boy. Ben! Where is Hinks? He's supposed to dine with me tonight. These people are leaving. If they give you any trouble, you know what to do. The trouble is yours. Your father was proud, but by far the worst thing his pride spawned was you. The blood is all on your hands, Harry. You will rot in hell. <laughs> I'm not going there a while. You are there now. like to meet my son, the boy you took from me. I never meant him harm, Mom. I swear it, I never meant him harm. But you will admit it. Oh, Mom. It was Master Harry, it was his plan. He was as greedy for wifeness as, as her. <laughs> God, have you seen what she did to him? Have you seen it? You must listen, and you will know the truth behind this murder. Tell him. The Wyvern heir did not die, sir. It was another baby. He was taken to the Archdales. And he is here now. Have you made your plans, ma'am? We will not be living here. Then who will be? We will find a very suitable tenant, one we all like. I will not inflict a tyrant on you. And Tom will be here, and so will Lily, and Mrs. Tarnley, if she agrees to wear a better countenance. And where will you be?
Why are you yelping? Oh, I just had a bad dream. Sometimes I have them. And will it come true? Never. Never.